Hi everybody! Today we're going to see the final part of natural science, but before that we're gonna go through the previous contents because Rose and I don't exactly know to what extent you are understanding this unit, okay? So let's get started. Alright, let's get started from the very beginning. First of all we saw the definition of a magnet, which is an object with the ability of attracting some metals. We saw some uses of magnets in our daily lives, such as fridge magnets, closed tax magnets, metal detectors, magnetic resonances, credit cards, and here we had a video about it. We saw the concept of magnetic field, which is the space around a magnet where the magnetic force acts. And down here you had a video where some iron fillings are spread around the magnet, and you can see how those iron fillings align, showing the lines of the magnetic field. We saw the magnetic poles as well. We saw that every magnet has a north pole and a south pole. If the same poles are facing each other, they repel each other uh, to north poles here, to south poles here. But if the north pole is facing the south pole of another magnet, they attract each other. We also saw here that uh, when we cut a magnet in half, we don't get a north pole and a south pole. Okay, uh, what we get is two smaller magnets with a north pole and south pole each. And we, if we keep on cutting them in half, we get smaller magnets, but all of them have a north pole and a south pole. Here we saw that the Earth behaves like a big magnet, but that magnet is upside down. That's why the geographic north pole is here, but what we have next to it is the magnetic south pole. All right, and here we have the geographic south pole with the Antarctica here, and we have the magnetic north pole. And that's why a compass, the needle of a compass, is attracted by the, the magnetic south pole of the Earth. The north uh, pole of this uh, needle okay, is attracted by the magnetic south pole. Obviously, the south attracts this, this north, okay, different poles uh, attracting each other. And that's why this compass points at the magnetic south pole, which coincides with the geographic north pole. So that's why compass points towards the north. Here you had a video uh, explaining that. And we also studied what magnetite is, which is basically a natural mineral with magnetic properties. And here you had uh, two more videos explaining how trains use magnets, how trains use magnetic forces to work. And here in this page, we start with the most complicated part of the unit. First of all, we got to know Hans Christian Orsted, and he discovered that an electric current has a magnetic field around it. And he tried this experiment where he connected a copper wire to a battery and he put it next to a compass. And he saw that when this was connected and the electric current goes, was going through the copper wire, the needle deflected and was pointing towards the, the copper wire. And that's how Hans Christian Orsted discovered that every electric current has a magnetic field around it. And here is the explanation of how to create an electromagnet, a homemade electromagnet, okay, by using copper wire coiled around uh, an iron rod or a, could be a, a nail. Here you have uh, the same experiment as Christian, Christian Orsted did. And down here you have uh, the explanation of how to create an electromagnet at home, a homemade electromagnet. And here's the video. And Rosen and I have been seeing your, your experiments, the videos you've sent to us and they were great. And here we have Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday, 10 years later, the Norsted discovered that every electric current uh, creates a magnetic field around it, tried another experiment. He said, and can magnetism produce electricity? Because Orsted had discovered that electricity produces magnetism. So Faraday created a circuit where uh, a copper wire went through a meter 
okay, these meter measures electricity. And he discovered that when pushing the magnet inside this bobbin, the, the meter detected electricity. So the discovery was that uh, the movement of a magnet, okay, or the variety of the magnetic field produces electricity. And that way we can create electromagnetic generators. In some cases we can move the magnet between two bobbins. That's exactly what uh, Faraday had done in his experiment. And when moving this magnet we produce electricity or in some cases we can uh, move the, the bobbin between two magnets and we produce electricity in the same way. And here you had some videos of that experiment. And after seeing this theory of electromagnetic generators, some of you might be wondering, but does it really work in real life? Okay, you're going to see a video. I'm not going to, to play it entirely, but I'm going to play part of it. And you will see that this really works. Okay, this is called the Faraday generator. What are they doing? They have a bobbin and this bobbin has a hole in the middle where they are going to insert this magnet. This bobbin is going to be connected to multiple light bulbs. These ones, okay? So now they're going to insert the magnet inside the bobbin and as this bobbin is connected to all these light bulbs in the shape of a heart, they should produce, sorry, the magnet should produce electricity, an electric current, so they should light up. Let's see if it works. You see, every movement of the magnet produces electricity. And by shaking it, she can create this amazing effect. The video continues. Uh, in fact, this person is going to switch off the light to, to make the room dark, but that's something you have to watch, okay, by yourselves. So after watching my video, open the next, um, the next document where we can access this, and you can watch this video as many times as you want. So, we've seen that if we move a magnet inside a bobbin, a bobbin this generates and produ or produces electric electricity and vice versa. But uh, how do we use electromagnetism to, to make things work? Okay, the electric generator is clear, is this, okay? What are we doing exactly? We're using movement plus magnetism to produce electricity. So moving a magnet or moving a, a bobbin, which is between two magnets, we produce electricity. So remember, movement plus magnetism produces electricity. But uh, in electric motors, what we really have is magnetism and electricity, and we use that to produce movement. And let's have a look at it. Bearded Science Guy here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple electric motor. So, how do they make this? They use a battery. So, this battery produces electricity, and we have a magnet here. So, we have magnetism. So, by using electricity and magnetism, we can produce movement. As you can see, uh, this bobbin is connected to this cable. This cable goes to the battery. And on the other side, we have the same, okay, a cable and this bobbin. So the circuit is closed. So the electricity is running through this bobbin and we have this magnet. So electricity and magnetism and we produce movement. Bearded Science Guy here. And today I'm going to show you how to make a simple electric motor. Begin by wrapping 20 gauge magnet wire around a D battery until you have about 10 coils. Now take the ends of the wire and wrap them around the coil until they hold it securely in place. 
Make sure both wires are directly opposite of each other on the coil. With the coil standing vertically, sand the top half of the insulation off both wires. Now take two paper clips and bend them into long hooks with loops of wire at the end. After that, use electrical tape to secure the two paper clips to the D battery. Make sure that the loops of wire are about the same height off the battery. Now you're ready to put your electric motor together. Start with the base of either clay or play-doh. Place the D battery securely in the center with the loops of wire facing upwards. Now place a neodymium magnet on the top of the D battery. Finally, you're ready for your coil of wire. The coil of wire is an electromagnet, and when connected, it will begin to line up its magnetic fields with that of the neodymium magnet. So in real life, what can we use an electric motor for? We can use it to create a blender, which is the device you use to mix food and create, for example, a puree or a milkshake. We can also use an electric motor to create a drill, which is the device you use to make holes on a wall. Or you can also use it to create a fan. And everybody here should know what a fan is because that's a, a word we have studied in English Unit 8. And also, okay, um, as we've seen, the electric generator, we're going to see the use it has in real life, okay? Apart from, from the homemade electric generator that you've seen in the video, uh, this is also used in dynamos, in the bikes, okay? You see that here, this wheel is going to make this little wheel rotate. This is connected to this magnet, so this magnet is going to, to be spinning, to be rotating. And here we have a bobbin. So, we have movement and we have a magnetic field. Okay, we have a magnet, we have magnetism. So remember, movement plus magnetism, what, we, what do we produce? electricity. So as this bobbin is connected to this light bulb, this light bulb is going to light up and that's the, the way a dynamo works. And down here you have a video of, a, of how a dynamo, a bicycle dynamo works. You can watch it. It's really interesting. So that's something I highly recommend. And that's all. I hope this helped you to understand it a little bit better and I'm going to use this moment to tell you that all your teachers are missing you a lot and we hope you enjoy these holidays obviously at home but you can make the most of your time at home to do things that you have never done or things that you don't normally have time to do and we'll see you back. Bye bye!